But Hillary Clinton, she questioned the election results of 2016. In a little bit of a different way, though. No, no, no. It yeah, was she, definitely no, no, she actually questioned the outcome. Hillary Clinton conceded the election the next day, the day after the election. Mm -hmm. You don't see how that's different than Donald Trump spending not only months, but years <laughs> after the election, undermining every institution. Tell me, tell me an institution he undermined. I, every institution? Every institution? Well, let me ask you this. Do you trust Bill Barr? No. Do you trust the DOJ? No. Do you trust the FBI? No. So these are the institutions he's been undermining. Well, they should be undermined. The FBI was lying in front of Congress. In a moment, I'm going to show you a string of similarly facepalm worthy things being said out of conservatives' mouths, out of MAGA people's mouths. And I will conclude this video with an event from back in 1938 that very well might have been the blueprint for all of this, for this exact kind of manipulation and overreaction and misunderstanding of the facts. Before before we get into it though, just this very cowboy hat wearing man's cognitive dissonance is mind blowing, is it not? No, no, no. It yeah, was she, definitely no, no, different. she actually questioned the outcome. Hillary Clinton questioned the election too, but you realize conceding the next day is different than continuing to not concede and undermine all of our institutions, right? Uh, I mean, look at this guy's face. Uh, also, side note, just cut the nose hair. Please cut the nose hair. Not what I need to be focusing on, but it's hard not to. I hope you understand. Make America great again. It's his, been his mantra since he's run in 2015. What does that mean? What is again? When was America great? Well, that question right there says everything that I need to know about, about you, that you don't really think America was ever great at any time. I think America was great. The spirit, the whole purpose for America was about the American spirit, coming here and making something for yourself and having the opportunity to do that for yourself, to work hard. And that's what America is all about. So the people that hate America will always say, well, when was it ever great? It's just not a very good attitude to have, in my opinion. I and mean, when was that lost in, in your estimation? Um, I think a lot of it was lost when the Federal Reserve took over the money system. Uh, we need to go back to a gold and silver backed system where currency is is it counts so apparently you're not allowed to work hard and climb in this country anymore according to this woman with trump in the largest font ever made on a hat or even to be seen from outer space it's quite intense but at least that's a new one usually you don't hear that answer when you ask maga people when america was great again usually it's tinged with an incredible amount of racism kind of like this guy i'd like to get back like it was in the 60s before all the civil rights stuff? Before all the civil rights stuff. So you would like to see things go back to before the civil rights movement? Oh yes, oh yes. You know, where people have their freedom in this country. Well, cer certain groups didn't have as much at, at the time, right? Right, they, did, they didn't have as much at the time. But we still gotta get back where this country stands up for this country. Yes, we certainly do have to get back where this country stands up for this country. And we must get back to the time, according to this very white man, before the civil rights movement, when people had freedom, except people who didn't have freedom and were treated far worse than even second-class citizens. But it was great for this guy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because he had the same level of freedom he has now, but also didn't have to respect minorities back then, which was really great for him, apparently. I mean, that man legit thinks that America is just for white people. That's all it should ever serve. Much like this next person thinks America is just for Christians. You have to swear on a Bible to be an elected official in the, in the United States of America. He alleges that a Muslim cannot do that ethically, swearing on the Bible. You don't actually have to swear on a Christian Bible. You can swear on anything, really. I don't know if you knew that. You can swear on a Jewish Bible. Oh, no, you can swear I swear on, a, on the can, Bible. I've done can, it three times. I'm sure Jay. you have. I'm sure you've picked a Bible, but the law is not that you have to swear on a Christian Bible. That is not the law. You, you don't know that? All right, Ted Crockett. Was I don't know. I, I know that uh, Donald Trump did it when he when we made him president because he's Christian and he picked it. That's what he wanted to. That's what he wanted to swear in on. I mean, you don't even have to prove these people are stupid. You see it all over their faces. This man's response to you don't actually have to choose a Christian Bible was the very witty. 
Way to, way, to, way to come back with it. But Donald Trump did something. Yeah, so you and Donald Trump both did a thing. How proud you must be. So what am I getting at here? Conservatives' detachment from reality is a direct result of our country's abandonment of legitimate news media, which we've replaced with profit-driven, very, very fake news media instead. Complete profit interested without any sort of moral backing news media. We live in a country where people can choose what news they want to hear and then only watch that at specific news. And if it doesn't fit their political ideology, they can go la 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 until they find a different news outlet that does. But that is not how news is supposed to work. News is supposed to be based with objective truth, and that's sort of being the flagship of what it is. Even worse than that is over the years, outlets like Fox News have developed this strategy of preying on people's fears to maximize viewership. So it's not only not accurate, but it's also very, very fear-based to scare you into your belief system. That's why you always hear them talking about the border crisis and immigrants are invading the country and stealing the jobs of hardworking American citizens when no immigrants ever stolen your job, most likely. And it's possible that the blueprint that I mentioned at the top of this video goes all the way back to 1938 when it may have been unintentionally created during the War of the Worlds radio drama. I mean, if you know the story, during the broadcast, listeners were accidentally misled to believe a Martian invasion was underway. We were being literally attacked by aliens from the sky, not the ones I think are coming over the border. And it caused widespread panic. Orson Welles was such a good actor that this fear spread, stemming from the realistic and immersive nature of the broadcast, as well as a lack of clear disclaimers. It sounded exactly like this. Ladies and gentlemen, am I on? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, here I am, back of a stone wall that joins Mr. Wilmer's garden. From here, I get a sweep of the whole scene. I'll give you every detail as long as I can talk and as long as I can see. The more state police have arrived. They're drawing up a cordon in front of the pit. I mean... Wait a minute, something's happening. A humped shape is rising out of the pit. I can make out a small beam of light against a mirror. What's that? There's a jet of flame springing from the mirror and it leaps right at the advancing men. It strikes them head on. The Lord, they're turning into flames. Oh, the whole field's caught up by the woods. The fires are... The gas tanks, tanks for the automobiles are spreading everywhere. It's coming this way now. It's about 20 yards to my right. You see that broadcast and the panic it caused illustrates the intense power that media has on people and how easily information can evoke such strong emotional responses, shaping public perceptions and highlighting the significant responsibility that media outlets then have to ensure accurate and responsible communications. Don't worry, they're not listening. Unfortunately, outlets like Fox News have no interest in maintaining that responsibility and so our political climate and elections are shaped by their broadcasts. When you have organizations that only care about money, only care about profits, let their morals be damned, let the facts that they know to be true be damned, as we saw in the Dominion lawsuit, that they were intentionally telling their audience enormous facts relevant to the future of our nation that they knew to be not true. Well, then we've sold the country down the river. And what do we have left? Well, I would tell you. But do you hear that? There's aliens coming. I gotta go. I'm Ben Glebe for Rebel HQ. Follow me on Instagram for lots more. Okay, question for you. Are we alone in the universe? That was the central question during the latest congressional UFO hearing, if you watched yesterday. Testimony from former military and intelligence personnel focused on long-standing concerns about government transparency and was at times shocking. We have absolutely been able to confirm the, the existence of some sort of technology that has the ability to operate with anonymity within our controlled U.S. airspace, operate uh, over our sensitive military installations and possibly, possibly interfere with our nuclear equities. Now, if that's not a national security concern, I don't know what is. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here and aliens, government cover-ups, secret hearings. It sounds like a sci-fi blockbuster, right? But what if the real story here isn't about extraterrestrial life, but about how easy it is to sell people on anything when you mix a little mystery, a dash of fear, and a whole lot of conspiracy theory? Author and journalist Michael Schellenberger highlighted that the Immaculate Constellation Report compiles detailed UAP sightings with high-resolution imagery and intelligence, providing a more comprehensive look into these mysterious phenomena. Now that we have all been cautioned in this committee hearing uh, that the mention of Pentagon's uh, Immaculate Constellation program could uh, put us on a list, well, um, I already find myself on many lists, I'm sure. So um, I speak my mind often, so why not just keep going with it? Um, may as well just go all out and say it. The earth is flat, birds are government 
drones, and uh, we've never set on foot on the moon, and Joe Biden received 81 million votes in the 2020 election. So uh, let's just see how many, how many lists we could get on here today. UFOs, shadowy government programs, and even space armadas are playing directly into the culture of suspicion and distrust one that helped push Donald Trump into office and continues to empower people like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. who spread extreme narratives. I think I understand from this hearing that you would agree that classifying information like this is not in the best interest of the people. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, with the caveat that, of course, I, you know, I would support classification necessary to protect secrets, essential national security, but I think it's pretty obvious that there's overclassification Overclassification, yes. And so, in most instances, if they can't tell us what, do you think at some point they'll at least tell us why? You know, President elect Trump has repeatedly committed to greater transparency, both on the UAP issue, on JFK files, on yes. COVID origins, and many other things. So, I think that uh, we need to make sure that the next administration is held accountable for that. Agreed. Let's face it. Humanity has always been fascinated by the unknown. The possibility of aliens and government secrets is thrilling. It taps into that primal question, are we alone in the universe? But when we go from curiosity to conspiracy, we enter dangerous territory where facts become secondary to sensationalism and truth takes a backseat to whatever sounds exciting. Take the recent UAP hearings in Congress, for example. These are moments that could reveal something incredible. But instead of pursuing truth, We've got people like Lauren Boebert playing Marvin the Martian. It's like the four d's of the apocalypse are in control. Anti-vaxxers, flat earthers, 5G conspiracists, and QAnon diehards, all feeding into the toxic mix of suspicion and distrust. And what's wild is that Boebert, Nancy Mace, and others are fueling these beliefs, playing up conspiracies, and presenting themselves as heroes fighting for disclosure. Boebert even nodded to some of these ideas herself, mock mocking mainstream narratives. But let's be real, her concern isn't for transparency. This is a politician who doesn't support health care, who doesn't believe veterans deserve better care, and who's aligned with Project 2025, which would strip protections from everything from Social Security to environmental safeguards. The irony here is incredible. The people who voted Boebert back in and others like her are the same ones who buy into RFK Jr.'s anti-vaccine nonsense. They believe in things like the decalcification of the pineal gland, this bizarre theory that fluoride in our water is somehow imprisoning us by blocking our third eye, a so-called gateway to enlightenment. Supposedly getting rid of fluoride will lead to spiritual awakening. It sounds ridiculous, but people actually believe it. They're convinced the government is using fluoride to keep them passive, ignoring decades of scientific evidence about fluoride's benefits for dental health. And then there's RFK Jr.'s COVID vaccine conspiracies, which are based on equally flimsy science. His followers believe the vaccines alter DNA or are part of some dark agenda, despite zero evidence to support these ideas. These narratives appeal to the same crowd that thinks there's a massive government conspiracy around UFOs, that the moon landing was faked, and that some kind of space armada or cube is headed for Earth. This is the same group that believes in deep state plots, dark elite forces, and government-backed mind control. These conspiracy theorists pick and choose their truths based on what fits their narrative, not on what's actually proven. Luis Elizondo, a former military intelligence official and UFO investigator, even confirmed in a hearing that yes, we did go to the moon. But does that change the minds of the moon landing deniers? No, they'll still believe it was staged because that's what feeds their distrust. This selective belief system allows them to dismay any evidence that doesn't fit their worldview while embracing anything that does, even if it's been thoroughly debunked. We have a lot of former officials who have you know, gone on the record under oath and said, listen, there's more to what the U.S. government knows about UAP than what Congress is being told than what the American people are being told. Unfortunately, right now, most of what we are hearing is information pertaining to alleged secret programs, whistleblower allegations. And again, what I think many people want is more confirmed information, more individuals on the record. A yeah. uh, lot of this coming secondhand to journalists, which again, you know, unfortunately, given the climate and the nature of the subject, that's understandable to an extent. But again, I think a lot of people came away from yesterday's hearing saying we'd like to see a little more tangible evidence. What's truly 
really maddening is how much money is being made off of this. People flock to UFO conventions, buy alien-themed merch, and subscribe to exclusive insider content. The people running these events know there's a hungry audience looking for answers, and they're happy to take their money. It's a massive industry of conspiracy and paranoia, fueled by the very people who tell us that they're revealing the truth. And who are the big winners in this game? The same figures pushing these narratives and keeping people in suspense. It's easy to see how this whole system primes people to distrust everything from public health to government institutions, leaving them vulnerable to people who want nothing more than to exploit them for profit. They've built a world where the truth seekers are really just picking the pockets of people desperate for answers. But the real irony is that while Bobert, Mace, and the other disclosure warriors posture as heroes, they're actually distracting us from real issues. They've got people looking for the stars while they work to gut protections here on Earth. Project 2025, supported by the same politicians stoking these conspiracies, would defund public resources like PBS and NPR, cut Social Security, and strip environmental protections. If these cuts happen, the sources of verified information and science-based reporting will be weakened, creating an even bigger void for conspiracy theories to fill. So while these UFO hearings are fascinating and it's exciting to wonder about life beyond Earth, we need to stay grounded. Just because someone is calling for disclosure doesn't mean they're giving us the truth. And when politicians like Boebert, known for pushing fringe theories and voting against basic rights, are the ones leading the charge, it's worth asking, is this about truth or is this just another distraction? At the end of the day, the real story here isn't what's happening in the stars. It's what's happening here on Earth. Healthcare, social security, environmental protections. These are the things that actually impact our lives. And the politicians playing up these alien narratives are the same ones threatening those protections. They'd rather keep us guessing about space armadas and cosmic cubes than face the fact that their policies actually hurt people. The next time you hear about a government cover-up or a space cube headed our way, ask yourself, is this story truly about finding the truth or is it a distraction? Remember, questioning is good, but discernment is better. If we're too busy looking for answers out in space, we might miss what's happening right here, right now, in the world that actually affects us. So let's stay curious, but also let's stay focused. Because while conspiracy theories may be entertaining, the issues we face on Earth demand our attention. Thanks for listening, and remember, stay skeptical, stay informed, and keep your feet on the ground, even if your head is in the stars. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.